Hi, I'm Matt Litz with Fahrenheit Technologies. In this video, we'll be troubleshooting the actuator limit error code. This code is generated when the top or bottom actuators do not meet the limit within the allotted time. Each travel takes 10 seconds. And you'll also note that I have the left side panel and the exterior door removed for demonstration purposes, giving us better visibility of the top and bottom actuators. You'll also see that I have the lower cam cover removed, exposing the cam and the micro switches for the actuator. If you note, know, the inner and the outer high points for the cam rotation, this is going to determine your length of travel. As this cam rotates, depending on that distance of travel, it's going to engage the inner or the outer micro switch. Should that micro switch not be making contact with the cam, is where the error code is going to be generated from. We're going to start by diagnosing the burn pot for any potential jam ups. Removing piece by piece just to make sure there's no bent, warped, or fatigued metal that could be causing the jam up. Checking the sides of the relight plate. Checking the inner and outer walls of the pusher assembly. as well as checking the two nubs on the pusher arms for the flapper door. Proper alignment, those two nubs should be in between the inner and the outer walls of the pusher assembly. Should you have this installed incorrectly, you'll get an actuator limit error every single time. Making sure your pusher assembly is all the way in position on both the pusher assembly and the relay plate, making sure both pinholes are engaged in the push rods. Should you consistently be getting an error code, you would want to take note the consistency as far as the amount of time from startup to the time that you actually get the error code because based on that, you'll know with each travel being 10 seconds long, roughly what actuator it's faulting out on. Next, we're gonna go to the control panel and we're gonna manually operate both top and bottom actuators. So scroll through to your maintenance section, press enter. We're gonna go between plate control and pusher control. So we're gonna start on plate control, press enter twice. Now, at this point, you're going to listen for any actuator movement by pressing the up arrow if it's in the retracted position. To go to the lower actuator, press the menu button on the control panel, cycle down to pusher control, press enter twice again. Again, knowing it's in the fully retracted position, we're going to press up to extend. listening for the actuator as it cycles. Should you get an actuator that does not cycle, we're gonna to go to the back of the machine and swap the wire leads from top and bottom. Grab the two hooks engaging in the two connectors, separate those, as well as the bottom actuator. And we're actually gonna swap these leads around, making the top the bottom and the bottom the top. Should you go through and get an actuator that still does not function after doing this, if the same actuator fails to move, the problem lies with that actuator. Should the opposite actuator not move, then the problem is either going to be in the control board or the wire harness. Next, we're gonna go through and describe how to properly adjust your actuators. That is done by removing the clevis pin and cotter pin to realign the back adjustment. So if your flapper door is too tight 
or your top plate is overhanging the fire or behind the feed ramp, we're going to take that and we can position that by adjusting these tubes. Remove your cotter pin, followed by your clevis pin. That's going to allow this tube to sit there and free spin. To make a forward adjustment, in other words, taking your overall travel distance and moving it forward, you would rotate this clockwise looking from the back of the machine, or to draw your entire travel distance backwards, you would take this and rotate it counterclockwise looking from the back of the machine. And because I have the control board mounted like this, at this point your side panel is going to be already installed so you would disconnect your main power supply and then go through and remove your control board and then make your adjustments through the control board opening of the side panel. Once you're in there you'd also want to take a 3 16 Allen wrench and you'd want to double check the shoulder bolt holding the slide arm bracket for the lower actuator because gravity tends to have this drop down with all the vibrations depending on the amount of buildup inside of the burn pot. This tends to work itself free, so once a year when you go through and grease your actuator slides, you'd also want to double check that bolt just to make sure it's still secure. Once you get your back positioning all retuned, we're going to go through and walk you through how to adjust the forward adjustment or determine your overall length of travel. So going back to the cams, you'll note that I have a sharpie mark connecting my inner and outer cam for a good starting point. Using a small Phillips head screwdriver, loosen the screw holding both the cams together. To shorten your overall distance, you're going to take the internal high point and the outer high point, and you're going to bring those closer together vice versa, to lengthen your overall travel distance, you're going to widen the gap between your inner and outer high points. Should your control board be defective or your actuators be defective, you can contact your local dealer or contact Fahrenheit at FahrenheitTech.com through our contact form. Thank you for watching.